I can't believe in less than 24 hours, I'm gonna be finishing up my flight on my first solo trip. My mom's here. You think you can step outside and like absorb all the bugs for a minute? <laughs> Love you. Love you. Oh, okay, here I go. I hate bugs. Here I go. I'm a run. I think I'm lost. I think I'm back on track. Some really nice lady helped me in baggage claim. I look crazy right now. <laughs> when I booked this hotel, I gotta tell y'all that story later. I will tell you that story later. But <laughs> when I booked this hotel, I did not plan on having this kind of view. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Like what in the world? They didn't know I was a vlogger. They just, wow, I'm dumbfounded right now. But I guess I should actually start the vlog officially. Hi, how are you? What's up? It's been weeks, a very long time since I have vlogged. I took a break and it was a much needed break and now I am not taking a break. I am back and I'm shook. Honestly, I really need to eat breakfast. It is now 9.55 and I'm not eating breakfast. My stomach was not happy about eating at 4 a.m. I need to eat, look around. Like what in the world? This is wild. Do we want to see the face that up close? Mm. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> wow. Can't get over that view. Okay, so you have to tell me, are you an overpacker or like a average packer or an underpacker? I'm an overpacker. So I'm sure you're wondering why I'm even here. Why am I in Chicago? What's going on? I ran away, <laughs> basically. Uh, no, I didn't actually run away, run away, but here, let me just tell you the story a little later, but I will fill you in as to why I'm in Chicago. Look at my care of. Oh, how cute. There's this place right here. It's the Nutella Cafe. I was like, what? Like, I never even knew they had that. But yeah, Nutella has its own restaurant. Yes, I'm in Target.
I guess I didn't realize how much my style has changed. I went into Zara and it was nice, but it was like, honestly, it was pretty boring. It was like J. Crew. I don't know what happened, but I'm gonna try to find this particular place and show y'all real quick. outside of the Sears Tower, which I hear if you try to call it the Willis Tower, you would probably get beat up. Last time that I actually spent physical time in Chicago, I was only two, maybe three years old, and we went up there, me and my parents. It's kind of crazy now being out here, being on this trip by myself, experiencing these experiences and doing this all on my own. Uh, it's definitely a good life moment. So I thought I'd just kind of give you a backstory as to where I've been, why I'm here in Chicago of all places. And no, it's not because I wanted to do this nostalgic moment, but basically I needed a break badly. I shared that mental breakdown video and then I went to vlog the next vlog. I was still in the midst of a mental breakdown. It sucked. I cried for a good 20 minutes straight while I was talking to my husband on the vlog. I have basically been vlogging nonstop since September or October of last year. I did Vlogmas, most of it's gone. The videos weren't that great. On top of that, we were also recording our house hunting process and our process flipping our house in the beginning of us moving in and renovating it. I couldn't do both channels because I was editing for both channels. Then I started to focus hard on this one. I have produced for about four months straight a video every two or three days. And then I slowed down to like once or twice a week. Finally, I needed this break. I'm so glad that I took this break. It's been worth it. It's been hard to not vlog. I feel almost weird vlogging at all, let alone vlogging in public in the city of all places. Like y'all saw me vlogging in Kansas City, like losing my mind and being nervous. Here I am like forcing myself to be uncomfortable in a much needed time. Here's the deal. I have done a really bad job of honoring myself as a person and getting to know me and supporting myself. You automatically go through a identity crisis in your mid twenties. You automatically go through an identity crisis after you have children. But if you don't really know fully who you were before those things, happening and then both of those things happen <laughs> it's the worst collision course ever to add that I have this channel your channel is basically your personality in video form it was no surprise that I was breaking down all of the time so why did I pick Chicago of all the places to go well I knew I wanted to do some sort of trip I actually wanted to do this weeks ago and I said, no, I can't do it. I can't even go on a trip by myself. I'm too awkward and I'm too anxious. I'm too afraid of something bad happening to me or something bad happening to my kids. And I just can't. And then I did it anyway. <laughs> I disrupt my comfort zone and I said, you know what? You're going to go and the tickets are way cheaper during Labor Day weekend. So let's go ahead and go. I just decided, you know what, I'm going to Chicago. I want to go to a city that I haven't fully experienced. Push myself out of my comfort zone. The city for me is a creative space because there's so many people to observe and things to see, architecture to look at. There's so much to absorb in a city. Here I am in Chicago for the first time in two and a half decades, all by my lonesome, without my family, without any friends. And no, I'm not meeting anyone later. This is all me the whole trip and I'm excited to take y'all with me and now I feel like crying so I'm gonna turn the camera off I know I stink. It's just a hot day. 
It's been real hot this summer. Uh, well, I had to come back because my battery died and I wanted to show y'all what I saw, but I didn't get as much footage as I wanted to. There's so much more we're gonna do tonight. Tomorrow, I think tomorrow's video is going to be completely separate. I'll just do a part two. I'm gonna rest, maybe DoorDash some food. Wow, that's really good. I want you to comment below if you have traveled alone. If you haven't traveled alone, then I also want you to comment below. Yes, comment below both ways. I have learned some good tips on YouTube about traveling alone. After this trip, I could definitely do it more often. It always takes that first jump and then you discover you'll be okay. Some pro tips I learned, you can easily just like either pack one or get one when you get there, a door stop for your hotel to block the door. That is such a great idea. Obviously having good rules. That was so weird. You okay? <laughs> My camera was like, there's an error and you need to reinsert the battery. Oh, where's my makeup? I gotta fix this. One perk I will say about being here, people are less weird about talking to you. Yes, the Midwest is friendly, people are nice, but like the conversations there are small talk. Whereas here, I had, I had one guy see me with the camera and start talking to me about how he's a, a producer for this small show. I think he actually thought I was from here, to be honest. And this other guy was talking to me about the weather, but then he like segued into something else and it was interesting and funny. We just talked briefly as we crossed the street. Then he said, you have a good day. And then this other woman saw me with a book that I just bought at the bookstore, which y'all missed. <laughs> because my battery died. She saw me and asked me if the book was good. Then she realized, oh, you haven't started yet because my bookmark was at the front. And then I told her about what the book was about and her and her friend and I were talking about how good it was and, and, and like stuff like that. Back in Kansas City, this is such a weird angle, I'm sorry. Whew, that's better. Stuff like that back in Kansas City doesn't necessarily happen, especially if I have a camera. People see you with a the camera, they get weird. <laughs> and I don't know why. It's not like I'm standing there like staring at people and filming them. It's either facing me or I'm just holding it. But like here, whether I had the camera out or not, people were interested in drumming up a conversation with me. On my first day, I've had more conversations with people in this vlog than I did in my vlog downtown back home. I just find it interesting being from a smaller city, you would think that I would feel more comfortable there. Comfort can be a crutch. It can whisper in your ear to stay in the same place when you know your life doesn't really begin until you step out into the unknown. Comfort can also spark creativity. The ease you feel fitting into a place disarms the anxiety that stifles your imagination. You start to see things beyond your worries and fears. You notice little joys, tiny glimpses of heaven unfolding in front of you that inspire something new within you. Chicago gave me this sense of comfort. My life in Kansas City, though good, didn't always give me this sense of comfort. In fact, it often was the source of anxiety the stress of fitting in and obeying the culture. The side of the city I grew up on was riddled with two and three car garages, houses with HOA feeds, and parents obsessed with their students' achievements. Being a young black woman in the suburbs meant striving to be better and do more, to harvest every opportunity, even if you didn't want to, to value looking good on paper, to garnish respect at school, in church, and at home and hadn't taught me how to exist freely, to simply be, how to dance when everyone was looking or laugh when others chose to be serious. 
the night didn't go as planned. I didn't end up riding the Ferris wheel or grabbing a cone at Kilwins or even staying out until 10 for the fireworks show. Instead, I soaked in the beauty of the living. I watched couples holding hands and laughing at things only they would understand. I saw kids goofing off without a care that others saw them. I observed pigeons and flowers and beetles and boats and thought about how easily life oozed with serendipity. These are the things that go unnoticed. The calming rhythm of thousands of feet patting down the pavement. The humor of cars honking at no one and everyone. The sing-song ringing of bicycle bells as they zoom past you. People strumming instruments, snapping photos, creating their art for all to see. I fought back tears as I watched someone share their small bench with a stranger. Felt my heart warm seeing people overcome with emotion, lost in jazz. The truth is, and always has been, that we are all all the same and we are all different. We're all uniquely existing together in the same universe with different stories of the same pain and the same joy. We are all beautiful and we are all alive. Your life and my life aren't really meant to look good on paper. That's not the highest goal. You and I are meant to live a life unbridled, teeming with the serendipity and nuance that comes with imperfection and beauty. We are meant to truly live, to disarm anxiety and arrest peer pressure in order to get comfortable, to get creative, to soak up every small golden moment until we're gone. <laughs>